Hi guys! Welcome to this series of how it feels to use. Inspired by Lazy Purple's How It Feels to Play series. God bless that series. On the other hand, sorry for not posting videos. I had to deal with school, Roblox coding classes, and generally being interested in other games. This game is so peak! This game is so peak! It's so fire! Wah, wah, do shows with me please. Shut the fuck up. Aside from that, this is how it feels to use Commander from Tower Defense Simulator. So Commander is one of the many towers from the hit game Tower Defense Simulator. It is one of the best towers in the game right now. It was added back in June 14, 2019. It is also the first ever tower to have a plushie. Even I have one. It's very cute. It's also the narrator for most modes, and it's also an enemy in special game mode Pizza Party, appearing on Wave 30 onwards. Which is cool, he's practically the face of TDS. Commander is also a support tower costing 3.5k coins at the shop, and $650 to place down. It boosts the tower's fire rate by a lot. Its boost is a stack before they fix the commander's boost stacking feature on October 13, 2019. Commander in your loadout is essential if you want to win any game mode with any challenge to it. Using Commander feels like pressing a button that just makes your towers better, which is why it's so high up in some tedious tier lists. Well, it kinda is just pressing a button to make your towers better. There are so many situations in this game where Commander is needed to get a better time and even get passed away. Take these molten speedruns for an example. The loadout is Farm, DJ, Scout, and Accelerator. Compare this molten speedrun without the Commander and this speedrun with the Commander. As you can see here, the one with Commander has a better time by 23 seconds, which shows that Commander can really help in a situation of getting a better time. I could do better, but I don't want to. XD. Then take this solo hardcore game on Crossroads. Hardcore is fun Crossroads, right? Okay? I would have died on waves 23 and 25 if I didn't use the Commander ability on the Golden Cup. Wait, fuck! If I didn't use the Commander ability on the Golden Soldiers, I would have been dead by now because of the Shadow Bosses on wave 25. I died to Fallen Rushers anyways because Cheap Pyro is stupid! Well. Okay, third time's a charm. I can make this clip work before the next example. If I didn't use Commander ability on the Golden Soldiers, I would have been dead right there on wave 25. But I died to Grave Digger anyway because I'm HORRIBLE AT THIS GATE! Then there's this pizza party game. Commander helped a lot in boosting the other tower's DPS. I don't think this would be possible Commanderless. It's possible DJ less so. You guys ever wonder if Commander gives motivational calls to the towers? I was originally going to use regular minigunner because I am a big boy tedious gamer, but then... I could go over more examples, but it just boils down to Commander very good support. <laughs> By the way, someone do Commander only Molten, please, 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 please Tanker doesn't wanna. part where I go more in depth now. Before I explain the mathematics, I have to explain how DPS is calculated. DPS is calculated by damage divided by fire rate. Simple enough, right? Just some decimals and stuff. However, there are different equations for different towers. Though let's just focus on damage divided by fire rate for just the first two examples. And also we have the rate of fire bug included, which adds about 0 0.008 seconds to the fire rate. Which means that the equation for calculating DPS is actually damage divided by fire rate plus 0 0.008 seconds. So let's get more in depth now. By the way, I haven't even mentioned what the ability is called. The ability is called Call to Arms. Very unique, I know. 
you get the ability at level 2 which gives your towers a fire rate buff of 30% with the added passive fire rate buff that the commander gives at level 0 to 1 which totals up to a fire rate boost of 45%. A big boost, isn't it? The boost gets better on level 3. It now gives a 50% boost at best. And on level 4, it gives a 55% fire rate boost. Crazy, I know. The ability is what makes the tower so good. So let's calculate the DPS with the commander buff. So basically what the commander ability does is give a fire rate boost. Yeah. But it goes more in-depth than that. More in-depth in a mathematical sense. So let's use the tower to demonstrate how much commander can really make a difference. The Minigunner, a great offense tower that can be used in any mode. It has 68.97 DPS with the rate of fire buff, and 80 DPS without the rate of fire buff. So if we use this equation for the commander rate fire buff from the wiki, thanks by the way, on the Minigunner with the rate of fire buff included, we can see that it deals a whopping 94.16 DPS now. That's insane if you think about it. Remember, that's just one max Minigunner with a commander's boost. Imagine 5 or 10 or hell, maybe even 30. Yeah, that'd be a lot of DPS. Enough to shred enemies such as the tank, necromancer boss, and even the fallen king. This is impressive for an ability for a support tower that costs 3.5k coins in the shop. It turned an already good tower into a boss shredder. Now imagine the DPS on a tower like a turret or an accelerator. Let's do the math, shall we? For the turret, we just use the standard equation with the rate of fire bug included. Then boom, satisfactory DPS. Hey, that's pretty good! But for the accelerator on the other hand, it goes a bit like this. So add the damage, modify the overcharge, divide the damage, and throw something towards the equation. Wow, okay. This shows that having a commander in your loadout can make all the difference between winning and losing because of the ability. If I got any of the calculations wrong, please correct me in the comments or contact me in Steam in the description. on how I was going to explain this part of Commander. Like, I didn't really know whether to put it in Commanding the Army or the next chapter. So I'm just going to explain what Commander Chaining is. Commander Chaining is just chaining the Commander ability with three Commanders, basically ensuring that the ability is always active. You can do it by placing three or four level 2 Commanders, and then start by using the first Commander's ability. Then when that runs out, use the second Commander's ability. Then when that runs out, use the third Commander's ability. But if you have four, you can use the fourth Commander's ability early. And then you can use the first commander ability early, and then you can use the second commander ability early. Just so you know, you can like have infinite fire rate buff. I don't know. I, I didn't write this in the script, but I realized I can do that. <laughs> then repeat the process. It's simple yet effective. I recommend doing this with two guys. Also, commander training is the reason why teams usually have only one guy bring commanders, since the effects don't stack anymore, and you can place multiple of them. I kinda wanted to explain this during chapter 1, but I already finished that part already, since that part was just mostly explaining how Commander is really useful in most situations. Probably gonna make this segment to its own vid. Skins. If you don't know, skins are one of the more cosmetic parts of PBS. While most of them do nothing to the game, the golden skins are the ones that actually change the game. However, Commander doesn't have that, so let's just talk about his skins. Something neat about Commander is that he's one of the towers with the most iconic skins in all of PBS. Because you have Red Commander, a uh, Green Commander, a uh, Space Commander, and a uh, Woman Commander! Yeah! Having a skin on your Commander feels nice, honestly. Instead of having a plain old Commander, you can have unique ones. The commander has about 20 skins to choose from. Commander skins are one of the most unique in the game, from a lifeguard to a guard. <laughs> His skins are very unique and interesting, compared to some other towers, just like Pursuit. 
the weird ass skin this style. Commander skins are unique, true, but they also have custom voice lines. A great example would be the maid commander, where she has a soft feminine voice instead of the loud masculine voice that the regular commander has. It sparked so much controversy in the TDS community back when Frost Invasion was still around. There were so many TDS meme videos about it. Like, people kept calling other people simps because they use the skin. Deadass. Then there are other skins, just like the Galactic Commander. It doesn't have a unique voice line, but it's pretty cool. Then there's a skin I hold dear to my heart. The plushy Commander skin. I don't use it too much, but the reason why I hold it to my heart is because the skin comes with a plushie. In real life! That's right, Commander has merchandise. He has two plushies and a real life hoodie. I don't have the other plush or the hoodie, but I do have this plush. It's pretty cool. Commander skins are great, and I do hope to see more in the future. So using Commander feels like pressing a button at times. Yeah, that's it. This isn't an FPS game where each character has a gun or something unique about them. This is a tower defense game, do you expect me to go more in depth? However, Commander is a good tower that synergizes with other towers. It's loved in the TDS community. I don't think game modes would be possible without it. It's an iconic tower that everyone uses. And that is how it feels to use Commander. Also, god damn it, this, this video was supposed to like come out a month ago, but unfortunately, I fucking suck at maintaining my shit and like, I lost a bet. So, Sensei Xiang Mao, go subscribe to it, but like, god damn it. Also, don't subscribe to me because it's funny.